This year's full meeting may be over, but work on many of the issues is just beginning. Currents News' Jessica Easthope got an inside look at some of the conference takeaways with the Bishop of Brooklyn, Robert Brennan. He explained this meeting was different than previous ones because of changes to the overall process. It was, it was good to be together with the other bishops uh, from around the country. We gave more time to smaller groups and to um, to sending messages back and forth, as it were. So certain questions were presented to the small groups, for example, the regional group. That's been part of our tradition, so that um, the bishops of New York State met. And we were asked for some input on a couple of questions, things like our priorities and things like um, the faithful citizenship letter. That all got communicated back to the various committees. The, what was new is we also had some other groups, for, they called them fraternal dialogues, so that um, it, we weren't talking just to the same group of bishops all the time, but we were talking in different groups. But it, it was interesting. There, not everybody gets up and speaks in the big meeting, but a lot of us, myself included, are far more comfortable talking in the smaller group, and then all of that information gets filtered up to the committees. And you could see in this meeting that it made a difference. You could see in this particular meeting that the input that they received actually helped them to refine the proposals they were making. And um, uh, you know, the Faithful Citizenship document's a good example. Um, they had given us four options. And after listening to all the input of the small groups, they put together a fifth option. And that fifth option was the one that carried the day. So um, it, it, it was just a, a, a more fraternal and a more um, um, localized kind of a conversation that led to the larger conversation. And Bishop, during Mass in his homily, outgoing USCCB President Archbishop Gomez referenced the need for self-examination and renewal for the bishops. What was he specifically talking about? You know, people talk about the unity of the, the bishops. That, that was a theme in recent meetings. Um, and, and I would say that there's a greater unity than you might think. We can have strong and vigorous debates, but we do it with a sense of charity, fraternal charity. And we do it with the sense of, of we're debating these ideas for the good of the church. Unity doesn't mean that we're monolithic, that we all think the same on everything. Unity comes about when we listen carefully to one another and then try to make wise decisions together. And that's what I think the Archbishop was getting at, uh, that self-examination to say, how can we make sure that everybody gets heard, listen carefully to one another, and let, and let the Holy Spirit work in that interchange. And as you mentioned before, the bishops decided to update the faithful citizenship document that helps form the conscience of Catholics in the voting booth. What revisions will we be on the lookout for in the future? Well, you know, the original document, one of the key authors of it was our own Bishop Damasio. And um, what Faithful Citizen tries to do is to focus in on the moral principles. We don't take um, partisan political sides, um, even though many people would like us to do that on one side or the other. Uh, but what we do is we, we try to um, elaborate on the important principles. These updates are trying to take those principles and apply them in an, in, to some of the newest situations. First of all, um, Faithful Citizenship was written in 2008. We have a new pope since then, Pope Francis, and so we want to incorporate a lot of his teachings. Secondly, circumstances have changed. Um, um, economic circumstances have changed. Political realities have changed. Um, Roe Ro v. Wade has been overturned you know, by the Dobbs decision. What, so what are the new realities in, in uh, witnessing to life? So you take the principles which really don't change from year to year, but we now try to apply some of those principles to some of the topics that are pretty important today. Archbishop Gudziak made a presentation about the war in Ukraine. There's so much suffering happening in that country right now. Imagine knowing that close to 100 cruise missiles are going at your cities. Yesterday was a 9-11 day. There have been many 9-11 days. All of us are old enough to remember what that day was like, 9-11. Things are diff difficult. He, I, I think he gave us a number, something like a million windows have been broken, and the major glass manufacturer 
has been shut down. He, he asked the question, imagine in the, as the winter months approach, just leave your window open. And many people don't have electricity or, um, or, the, the, or heat. Just imagine living under those circumstances, even for a night. Um, so um, he spoke about the plight of the people. He also spoke with tremendous gratitude. He spoke um, with gratitude for all of the help and the support that came from the diocese in the United States. I know our own diocese here in Brooklyn and Queens was very, very generous. Um, and many dioceses, the Knights of Columbus as well, different agencies within the Catholic Church. So we've, we've been responding to those needs, the humanitarian needs, and he, he's been very, very grateful. And Bishop, you're interested in making a trip over to Ukraine. Well, he he did say that um, he did ex he he did invite the bishops to to come, and to see firsthand the, uh, the the situation up close. So yeah, that's something that would interest me if it could be worked out. So uh, we'll we'll take a look at that in 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 the months to come. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti, anchor of Currents News. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button on this video, and if you want to see more content just like it. Subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching because we are putting your faith in the news.